We are live. We are live on the Jeff Nozine podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Lopes. Super excited to have on today, Chef Christian Green. What is up, brother? What's up, man? Thank you for having me. I know it's was, it was tough to get me on here because of my schedule, but uh, it's a blessing to be on here. Thank you for inviting I, me. I, I'm excited, man. This is gonna be a fun conversation. Let's 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 start about let's start off with Christian as growing up. Like, where did your love for cooking come from? I remember you talking about your grandmother and your mom on the show. Like, where did you love for for cooking, and how did that all aspire to where you are today? You know, my love for cooking came from you know being around family. Most important, my grandmother. You know, my grandmother used to work in a cafeteria way, way, way back in the day. You know, when she was uh, you know raising my my mom and and her siblings and whatnot. And then also, you know, my mom, she's a baker. She could bake her butt off. So, you know, just being around family that, you know, enjoy cooking, you know, uncles enjoy being on the bar on the barbecue grill. Um, that's really where the love and the passion came from, you know. So when I came, when I had opportunity to move to Boston, Massachusetts when I was young in elementary school, uh, I went to elementary school, also went to middle school and also high school. So when I got the opportunity to move to Boston and went to elementary school, middle school and high school, got to high school, I studied culinary. And when I studied culinary, you know, it was something that I drew a lot of interest in, of course, having a background of family or whatnot. But uh, it was just more, you know, I mean, we had different choices to choose from, from auto mechanics to carpentry to cosmetology to plumbing. And I decided to, you know, choose cooking, something that I fell in love with more and more. And and when from there, where did that take you? Like culinary school, like wh- when you finished graduated high school, where did, where did that start? Did you actually were you working in the field already? Like trying to even as a part time job or something? And then yeah, then- I was working. I was working at the um, I was working at a hospital in Boston, and I wasn't the guy the guy cooking the food. I was the guy more so putting the food on the tray. Yeah. You know? So just being around the, the you know the the atmosphere of food service, it was just something that really caught my attention that I really enjoyed. So when I graduated from high school, I attended Dilley University in New Orleans. So coming to New Orleans and with New Orleans being the city of what they're known for, food, it was a great opportunity to be, one, in the culture, but also to be, you know, in a city where they basically, like, live on food. You know, a lot of amazing chefs came out of here from, you know, um, Emma Lagasse, Leah Chase, and I can go on and on and on and on. So you know, have an opportunity to come out here and, and, and be in school. And, you know, of course, I needed a job. So, you know, I worked for Al Copeland Investments. He was the guy that started Popeye's. Yeah. And I worked, yeah, I worked in the restaurant industry. Well, when I got in the restaurant industry, I was just a dishwasher. They yeah. didn't want to give me an opportunity, an opportunity on the line. You know what I mean? So when I went in, you know, I lied on my application saying that I got the experience, you know, cooking on, on online and whatnot. But realistically, I was just really putting the food on the plate when I was in Boston working at the hospital. But, you know, this manager, the executive chef saw something in me, you know, at that time. And he was like, man, you ever fried, fried any, you know, food before? And I'm like, yeah. So he was <laughs> like, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start you on the fry line. So all you got to do is drop fish, fries. Fried oyster, anything that comes off the fry line, you got to drop and you just got to follow, follow the ticket. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So that went from me being on the fry line to pantry, from pantry to saute, from saute to grill. But people don't know when I came out of the dish room, I was also prepping too. So that was like really my interest to show the executive chef, like, you know what, I'm going to do these dishes. But like I'm gonna ease my way into this kitchen a little bit because this is what I really want to do. And plus, I already know y'all paying a little bit more about this. <laughs> so, um, you know, I took upon the opportunity, and then you know, one thing changed to another. I went from dishwasher cook to key manager to travel and training chef to working at a lot of different restaurants. Oh, when you talk about your period, like how many years in between this all? How many years? Well, yeah. Shit. So when you were when you were, came, so when you when moved in you, when you moved there and you're in school so you're I'm assuming 21 22 by then Yeah I was like honestly it was in 2004 when I first came to um when I first came to New Orleans and um yeah I was like right at 20 years old man And you moved on your own you didn't have no family there or anything So my mom we were staying in Boston at the time right Yeah my mom she decided to move 
leave Boston to come back to Louisiana because we're from Louisiana. Yeah, right? yeah. And we used to travel all the time to come to see my grandmother and see family, you know, during the summertime. So, you know, one day my mom came to me and she said, well, I'm moving back to the South. And I was like, well, mom, I'm in my senior year of high school. Why would you do that to me? Like, yeah. no, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm doing my thing with football. I'm doing my thing with track. Like, no. So she was like, well, you're more than welcome to stay up here with your uncle. So I was like, hell yeah, cool. Why not? <laughs> I'm with my uncle, you know what I'm saying? So, of course, the rules and the regulations are a little bit different from mine. So she did. She decided to let me stay up there, and I stayed. And I graduated in 03, got an opportunity to transition to the South uh, October of 2003. But I started college in 04. And, you know, I've been there ever since. I never had the thought of transitioning back to Boston. You know, I just stayed in the South and, you know, really just, you know, worked in the industry, industry for a long time and, you know, worked on a lot of, you know, dope chefs and, yeah. <laughs> when you first really got into it, was there one chef that kind of took you? You always hear that story of somebody taking you under the wing or or, or, or giving you that opportunity. Was there one chef that kind of put you under their wing or give you the opportunity that you could look back and like that was that was a good start there? To be honest with you, the executive chef from, from Al Copeland's investment, he he looked like he didn't take me under his wing. He just really gave me an opportunity. You know what I mean? Because he knew like, you know. I enjoy cooking, you know, I was eager to work. So he was like, you know what, I'm going to throw you on this line. Let me see if you can sink or swim, you know? Yeah. And that's how I got it out the culinary industry, you know, working at different restaurants and working with a lot of different, you know, other chefs. It's all about sink or swim. And yeah. that's what he did. He threw me out there to the wolves and I swim. I didn't sink, I swim. But, um. Do you keep in contact you know, with him at all? Do you keep in contact? Have you ever kept in contact with him? No. You know, he's, I'm, I'm once, sure he's, see, he's seen you on TV and stuff, so I'm, I'm sure. sure he's seen me on TV. Yeah, I'm sure he's seen me on TV and everything, but no, I haven't had opportunity to keep in contact with him. One of the things that I do know, that restaurant was closed down because when Al Copeland passed away years ago, yeah. a lot of his restaurants closed down. But um, nah, man, I just honestly just kept, you know, once I took that opportunity, I just, you know, kept my head down and just kept grinding, you know, just kept grinding it out, you know, learning on my own. You know, not being afraid to get in the kitchen, learn different culture styles of food, different techniques of, you know, cooking and whatnot, and just stay true to myself. And I'm sure that was one of the things that you guys saw on the show, you know, like I yeah. stay true to myself and I enjoy doing what I do, but also at the same time, like, I stay true to myself and I try to find different ways to elevate my food in, in, in whatever way possible. I love that. I love that. So let's let's talk about getting on the show did you apply did they find you i know with michael michael chef michael said that uh they just found them online like how, how did how did you get an opportunity originally oh, for season when five I did season, when i did season five i was engaged at the time so you know my fiance at the time she came to me and she was like hey you should do master chef i'm like what's that you know what i mean I'm like yeah. what's that it was like it's a show with 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 uh gordon ramsay so I'm like, oh, all right. So I was like, let's Google, you know, let's YouTube it. Let me check it out, see what it's about. So she YouTubed and she showed me. And I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. You people went to culinary school. You know what I mean? I ain't never went to no culinary school. I'm self-taught, you know? So she was like, no, like, you really can cook. Just try out, you know? You look good, so why not just try out? That's just an extra. So I'm like, I guess you know what you're talking about because... You know, you worked in that, you know, you should be an actress. You worked in the industry of TV and whatever it may be. So you obviously know what producers look for. You know, you have the eye for it because yeah, you've been in this yeah. type of, you know, type of uh, business. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So she comes home one day and she has the application. And I was like, yo, what's this? She said, well, I figured I filled this out for you. So I'm like, what? She was like, yeah, you're going to go do the show tomorrow. They want you to come tomorrow. That's when the audition is. I was like, well, thank you for the heads up. I said, but I don't even know what the hell I'm going to make. So, like, you know, I don't know what I'm making. So she was like, well, just think of something. Just think something different. So I was like, all right, whatever. So that day, within seconds, I was like, you know what? I'm going I'm to do something different. Because I know everybody's going to come downtown, New Orleans with gumbo, a yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a po' boy, fried shrimp, maybe a crawfish bread, whatever. So I was like, 
I'm gonna make a Creole crawfish and Dewey lasagna. She was have like, you have you done that yes? before? Hell no, nah, that was my first time <laughs> making it. <laughs> right? So she was like, that sounds good. She's like, you, you, you really do make great designs. I was like, all right, well, this is gonna be a little bit different. So I made a lasagna. We go downtown. Well, before we go downtown, I woke up at like six o'clock in the morning, right? And um, no, 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 no. We go downtown and I walk in and there was a table of like three individuals. So they was like, hey, man, what you prepared? So I took the lid off the lasagna, right? Yeah. And they was like, oh, shit. Like the smoke came out and everything. So I'm thinking God, God is next to me. He's making all this happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the little smoke stain come out of it. You could smell it. It was like, oh, my God, this smells so, so good. So I was like, yeah, you know? I said, yeah, it does smell good. So he was like, man, what is it? So I told him, I said, yeah, this is a cre- you know, crawfish creole lasagna with andouille sauce. And he was like, wow. He was like, all right, man, just go sit to the side. Here's your number. We're going to call you in the room, and we're going to go from there. Boom. They call us in the room. So I'm like, all right. Mind you, everybody quiet. Yeah. Everybody. Even the, even the judges. Yeah. You know, these regular the culinary judges and the people that was in there that was trying out. So I was like, what's up? How y'all doing? Personality. Yeah, 100%. People about TV, personality is yeah. key ingredient. You know? yeah. So I was like, what's up? And everybody was like, hey, how you doing? You know, whoa. So the guy comes, the chef comes on. He was like, hey, how you doing, man? I like your personality. I said, I like your suit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I was like, I like your suit. So he says to me, he was like, what you got? I said, man, I got lasagna. He was like, he tasted it. He was like, he said, wow, this is really, really good. And it has that kick at the end. Yeah. Oh, he was like, yeah, what's up with that kick? I said, just a little bit of cayenne, you know, cayenne pepper. So he was like, man, let me ask you a question. He was like, man, how old are you? I said, I'm 26. He says, you have kids? I said, yeah, I have a son. He's like, how old is he? He's, he said, I said, he's three. <clears throat> and then he says, well, listen, man, you got to leave. If you got to leave and go to California for a few months, how would you feel about not speaking with your son or your family or whatever it may be? So I said, yo, they got Skype, right? We can Skype, can we? So he started laughing. So he was like, okay. Then he walked away and went to the next person. So once we got to me, you know, dumping out the rest of the food that was going to play into the trash, the young lady says, great. We have the two of you. It was me and this young lady that was there. Like, we have the two of you. And I was like, yeah. So I was like, what, what you mean? She was like, you made it to the next round. I said, well, stop playing. She was like, serious, you made it to the next round. <clears throat> so I go outside. I tell the young lady at, at the time I was I was saying, I say, um, you take this lasagna. And if anybody asks you for any lasagna, you make sure you give it to them. I don't care who they are. She was like, why? I said, because they just told me I can go to the next round. So we're going to cut the story short. Get in the room. I meet the young lady named Yaz. She's like, we're going to play a game. You got to answer three. You got to answer all three questions. That's how the three goes to the next round. So I'm like, all right. Well, I only answer one out of the three. So she was like, I'm just playing. And she says, I want you to go out there and tell them that we need you here in the morning. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I go out there and I tell them, I say, yo, they say y'all need me here early in the morning. So she says to me, okay. She looked at a paper. We don't have any more slots. I said, wow. So I go back and I go tell the young lady. I said, they said they don't have any more slots. She said, what? Hold on. So she got she got up. One of the producers got up, went out there. She says, okay. She comes back to me. She said, Christian, we need you here at 8.30 in the morning. I said, what? I said, okay. You know what I mean? So I, I, I realized right there that, that they took a liking to me. You know, what yeah, I mean? because they yeah. they jumped me from everybody else that tried out for me, see me first. Yeah, right. So I get there next morning, get up in the morning, brush my teeth, I put on that Meek Mill dreams turn night nightmares and dreams. I guess what is it called? <laughs> dreams and nightmares. <laughs> you know, I used to, I used to, I used to think about times like this, ride like this. You know, so I'm I'm geeked. I'm like hell yeah. So. <laughs> I get to the hotel. They say, you got you to gotta come up to the room. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I come up to the room. I shit you not, bro. I'm looking for the room. I couldn't find the room. So it's like I was going in the maze. So as soon as I get to the, the, to the, to the other floor, 
I walk in the room, the door was cracked. As soon as I walk in the room, all you see is four women in pajamas. I said, if my fiance knew I was in this room with y'all, we won't even be doing this show. <laughs> and that right there is what really broke the ice and got me comfortable to talk to them, to get whatever they need, yeah. or whatever producers to see whatever. And then it was all she wrote, you know, went on the show, did my thing, went all the way to top five. Um, and yeah, the rush is history. When you're on the show, you're there for, you said, so you're in LA for, you said eight weeks for the show? Well, when I was on the show then, I was, it was, I was away for about three months. That long? Yeah. Three months. How, yeah. when you, so you are there for three stages, you're there for three months. How, how does it all, I mean, I, I understand the whole um, reality TV side. So you obviously, you, you sign docs that you can't talk to, maybe you can't tell anybody who's happy happening. As it's going on, is it? Are you constantly learning how to evolve your cooking there? Are they helping you? Are there people helping you? Are you doing everything on your Ain't own? Nobody helping us. It nothing. isn't, is there? Huh? No, nobody's helping us do anything. We just we cooking. We are cooking. So and you would do? You would go up. back to your hotel room? Would you study? Like, how would you evolve your game? Because obviously, from the start to the end, your game evolves so much, right? How would you keep we evolving your game? What you say? We have a library. We have like a little room with books. Yeah, huh? So you're That's always your constantly to studying, huh? Book and really cramp. What was that? You're constantly studying there. Continuously studying, man. Continuously studying. Pick up a book and, and, and being creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? And always, you know, being aware. Keeping your ears open because you want to just listen. You don't want to miss anything. Yeah. You know? Because once that clock starts, it's, it's go time and whatnot. Yeah, so your so, first experience, how would you rate it? Like overall experience when you were there, like were you, did you leave with like, wow, this is amazing? Because you you hear both sides of reality TV, right? Because I've I have I have a good friend of mine, Elliot Marshall, that was on um the UFC reality TV show, and he said it was the worst experience of his life. He would never do reality TV ever again. What was your first experience? It obviously, it had to be decent because you went back, but what was your first experience with reality TV? You was breaking up. What was that again? I said, what was your first experience with with reality TV? Because like oh, I said, I had I had a friend of mine. I had a friend of mine that had a really horrible experience with reality TV. He said he would never yeah. go back. Okay. Well, honestly, like my first experience with, with reality TV was pretty cool. It was chill. I mean, one of the things that was different from now to then was social media was different. You know, social media wasn't as popping as what it is today. You yeah. Yeah. But would I change anything about season five? Maybe the winner. But other than that, I mean, um, no. Um, nah, season five was cool. Now season twelve, shit, that's a whole nother story. You know what I mean? Okay, let, let's 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 fast forward a bit, and I'm gonna talk about dad life and your mom and all that after. But let's fast forward from season five. You get off the show. Did you use that momentum to really propel your career or did it slow? Like, what was your experience when you left the I'm show? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, when I got off the show from season five, it was really literally go time. You know, I had an yeah. opportunity to do a food truck with the with Gordon Ramsay. He wanted to, you know. Yeah, yeah. I rest. remember that. And basically with that, like, me being a father, you want to take care of my son and everything like that. Like, I don't have to sit. I don't have time to sit around and just wait. It got to the point where. You know, I did do a business plan and I sent it to, you know, whoever I needed to send it to. And it was just to me, I just felt it was just a going back situation. You know, we need this. We need this. And I'm not even going to lie. I really got a little bit of discouraged because at the end of the day, like I know my hustle as a man. I know yeah. my grind as a man. I don't need no no one else uh, stamp Approval. for me to propel. In life. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. I know what I need to do. I know. The grind that I have. So, you know, once I realized and felt like I just felt like the, you know, the business plan was just going back and forth. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just start my catering business and I'm gonna just go from there. So I started my catering business, did a couple weddings, you know, cooked for professional athletes, still private chef. And I just took that and I just I just took it to the next level. Um, do I feel like the show propelled me to have other doors open, yeah, a little bit, but not as much because at the end of the day, social media was not what it was, what it is today. Yeah. Um, 
but I just felt like, you know, it was good for like recognition more so say and letting the viewers know like, yo, this dude can really throw down. Like he really can cook, you yeah, know? Yeah. But like in regards to me starting my seasoning line, my own gumbo baseline, um, you know, me coming out with a cookbook and whatever, that, that was all my hustle. That was all my grind. You know, I appreciate Master Chef giving me the platform more so say, but in regards to um it's what, it's, it's, what, it's what you do with it after, right? I mean, in the other day, it is all your hustle. It all ha it has yeah, to be 100%. Do, to me, honestly, when it all boils down to it, it's adding to my legacy. Yeah, You know what I mean? I'm just adding to my legacy. It's not about MasterChef. You know, yeah. it, it, I, I appreciate the opportunity of being a, a contested season five and also season 12. But, you know, everything ahead was me. Yeah, you know, yeah. even before I did season 12, it was always a grind. It was always a go. Did I have any assistance from Master Chef when I did season tw season five after the fact? No, I didn't. Yeah. It was all me. Yeah. But yeah. that does not take away from the brand. That does not take away from the opportunity that they gave me. Yeah. Um, it's what it's what you use of how you use it, right? And you, like you said, the social media wasn't so prevalent. So, I mean, I'm sure season twelve, you were you were able to use a lot more of that moment for social media, right? I mean, I was able to use a, a lot of it for social media. Only thing that I don't really agree with is the editing of how they edit everything. They made it seem as though like I was just this big villain. I was just against everybody, and that that is not who I am. That's not my character. Um, but at the end of the day, I understand it's TV and you have to, get we'll talk about that after it. we'll talk about that after a bit. Let's, I want to talk about three that? things. I will talk about that after, but I want to, there's three things you said. There are three products, your cookbook and your two products. When you're starting to develop a product, like I've, I, one of my companies, uh, we've been doing, uh, we design and manufacture boxing, martial arts, and we're doing that for 17 years when you're designing and you're producing a product, what was that? Like, what was that procedure? Like what especially when it comes to the food industry when did you start that how did you get that out how did you release it let's let's right. talk about the that recipe. journey it start it's, it started with a recipe it started with it started with a recipe and it, it also started with researching who yeah. could i look for to possibly get this goal happen you know make this goal happen yeah and i started with one i started with one seasoning bro my cajun all purpose seasoning what are you what are you up to now and then now i have i have three now i have a cajun yeah. all purpose seasoning i have a zesty lemon pill seasoning and I have a lavender garlic herb season, which is one of which is my top seller. You know, so it was just really an idea of me sitting down writing a recipe and getting with manufacturers, hopefully, you know, actually getting it done. Now, are you are you on are you on shelf space or you sell online? Where do you sell primarily? Yeah, I sell it all online. I sell it all online on my website. Currently, I'm not in any stores. Um, they want. They want more money than anything. Or shelf understand. space, shelf like, space, shelf space in the industry stores, is like, crazy. The stores, they like one more, more money out of, out of, you know, out of everything. Which, yeah, yeah, it's it, it, that food industry is a different world altogether. When you're looking at shelf space, have you tried to even look at independent shops like little mama papa shops to carry it? Yeah, I thought about that, but like you know, my mind and 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 you know, my creativity is so much is so broad than that. You know, I even thought about you know, not even thought about. I'm in the process of getting with family and friends and starting my own um um organic vegetable agriculture line i'm, I'm yeah. really like i'm getting into that so like that is probably going to lead me into possibly opening up my own fresh market or whatever it may be but um to be honest with you bro i'm 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 totally cool with you know shipping everything myself yeah. i mean myself because i feel like it gives me an opportunity to have that type of relationship with my fan base, yeah. you know, versus from, yeah, you can go into the store and purchase my product, but also at the same time, I would love for it to be in the store, but at the end of the day, I just, good business is good business. And if it doesn't make any sense on the yeah, financial side, side, yeah, on the financial side, I'm not going to waste my time. You yeah, know? of course. I'll just sit by myself. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Cookbook. Uh, you have one book. When, when did you release your book? My, the release of my cookbook is is in a few months. I'm not gonna oh. give a date. I know everybody. Everybody is like, when are you gonna drop this book? When are you gonna drop this do you have, book? Do you have a title? You have a you have a title released already? Yeah. What's Christian it called? Southern Root. Christian it's... Southern Roots. And currently, right now, I am accepting pre orders. Um. So big shout out to everybody that already started purchasing the book. But the book will be out 
in a few months. We'll yeah. put all that in the show notes at the end and all that stuff. So your pen to paper, when you're like, I, I, I've, I've, I've tend pen to paper. I've written a couple of books. So when you're starting a cookbook, it's a lot different than an actual writing book because photography, the recipes, like what was that process? Like how long did it take you to put it all together? To be honest, it's just a process, man. You know, you got to master every recipe, make sure every recipe is right. You know, so when you sell this cookbook and people go Try in it. the kitchen, they start your recipes. They want to make sure it tastes just as the way you made it. So yeah. just basically building the content for the book and, you know, uh, writing the recipe, step one, step two, step three, step four, and just being precise with your wording, you know, so they can understand like, okay, this is what I have to do next. You know, a lot a lot goes into it, you know? And when I came off of season season five of MasterChef, like, that was one of the biggest things that a lot of people asked me. Like, do you have a cookbook? You got a cookbook? You got a cookbook? You got a cookbook? When I went on tour, you got a cookbook? You got a cookbook? And I'm talking about people were so ready to, like, buy a cookbook, like, if I had a cookbook back then. So I always told myself, timing is everything. Yeah. You know, even when I started my season line, you know, I had only one season, and now I have three. So I told myself, time is everything. And when time hit, I'm going to do it. So, you know, I'm I'm big on time. And, you know, I got with a publishing company and, you know, I started talking to them. I started telling them my vision in regards to the direction of how I want the book to go. Because I just don't want it to just to be a normal cookbook. I really wanted to tell the story of who I am, where I came from, yeah. and why these recipes mean, you know, very yeah. much dear to myself. And... You know, I would just tell people, you know, it's all about timing. And this was the right time. I love it. I love it. So let's let's dive into season 12. Uh, mm-hmm. When did you get that call for season 12? How did that all work? To be honest with you, I didn't even get a call. Okay. I did not get a call. They they sent a email to the to a old address, old email address okay. that I never used from my from like eight years ago. Okay. So a producer reached out to me on Instagram because they found me on Instagram. It was like, hey, we sent you some information, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, whatever. So I go and check. Yeah. And it was master So I was like, <laughs> when I come back, hell yeah, I've been dreading for something like this to happen. <laughs> so, you know, once I saw it, I was like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Definitely. I would love to come back. And, you know, yeah. I got that information and I, they, they told me what I needed to do and I did what I needed to do and I got back in that kitchen. I love it. I love it. I love it. This time around, this is all recorded, I guess, during COVID? It was recorded, yeah, around COVID, if I'm understanding, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. So it was a little different? Like, were you guys more isolated this time around? The recording yeah, definitely. Now? We were so isolated. I ain't got to say we was isolated from one another, but we made sure that nobody didn't have COVID. You know, big shout out to the producers because they made sure that we was healthy. They made sure that nothing really, like, we didn't come in attack with anything. Yeah. So it was tough, but shoot, we got it done. We got it done. Yeah. This time around, was it more bittersweet getting to the finale? Like, the, you're so close from getting there. And I know a lot of people, like, when you read online, a lot of people thought you should have won. Is that kind of bittersweet or just, it's, it is what it is? I, I hear it all the time. I just did four cities, four, four, four tour cities, right? Yeah. Boston, Atlanta, Dallas, and Houston. Yeah. I hear it all the time. And, 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 and this is not to take away from the winner or whatever it may be, but at the end of the day, if you, if you judge from the, from the beginning all the way to the end, you, you know, I outcooked everybody in that kitchen. You yeah. know, when it all boils down, and I was the most consistent one. Yeah. Now, in regards to the editing and how things look and how they look, I'll never agree with it. Um, and I, and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. So explain that. So, and you don't have to get in detail. You can do whatever detail you want to, but you you mentioned that before. So the editing part of it, and that's something that sucks with reality TV is that's out of your control. You only see that when yeah, it's released. So, so how, yeah. how, what, where did you, what did you perceive that they were trying to, like you said, show you as the villain, to as me, the mean, the tough I, guy there? To me, to me, I feel like at the end of the day, like, and I'm going to be straightforward with you. Yeah. If I wasn't on this season, Master Chef season 12 would have been boring. And I say that honestly. And yeah, that's not to it. take away from, that's not to take away from all my other contestants that was on it because they, they're badass cooks as well. But I just felt like with the excitement and the entertainment that I gave and how, how I cooked my ass off yeah. and with me being the most consistent one on the show, I feel like 
if I didn't make this season, season 12 probably would have been boring. And I really say that with truth. It probably would have been boring. It would have not been any type of excitement. Now, how they made me look, I feel like they made me look as though I was a bully. I was against everybody. I wasn't a good listener. And that was all false. All see, false. see, I didn't, I didn't, perceive, I didn't perceive that watching the show. You didn't perceive it. Well, to no. me, I feel like I, yeah. I, I perceived that. They, they made, they, to me, I feel like they made, it seems like I was a villain. Yeah. Like, I got to go. I'm going to go back and watch Derek it again. Honestly, whatever, I, like, I want to go back and watch it again because now you're saying that I want to go back and watch it because, I mean, when I think of the, the, the show and I watch, like I said, I watched my son, I didn't perceive that. I, I, I saw you as a, as always talking about your roots with your grandma, your mom, your, yeah. your love for your family, your son. Your, the end of this. That's what it, and that's what it, and that's, and that's what it is about me staying true to myself. Now, yeah. in regards to the contestants and how the contestants portray me, yeah. Or how the producers portray. I feel like they try to portray like I was against everybody. Yeah. Huh? Or like even 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 for instance with Derek, me dumping out the the potatoes, that really was a mistake. That wasn't intentional yeah. because when the judge came to me and they asked me, we just need one plate. I I was just telling them like let's just boil it off some a small pot of potatoes because it's, it's not going to take long for it to cook. Yeah. They're just looking at they're just looking for one plate to taste. Yeah. So my in my mindset at the time, I'm thinking, okay, why not just use this small pot and it's gonna take a little bit quicker so we can get them this plate. Yeah. But do I regret dumping the potatoes? No. Reason why is because if I did not dump those potatoes, we would have not had any issue from the blue team or any excitement. From the blue team, yeah. because we beat the red team by a landslide, 71 to 32. Yeah. So me, me intentionally dropping, I mean, dumping the potatoes out, that was not intentionally at all. That wasn't intentional at all. Yeah. Why, why would it be intentional when I want my team to win? Of course. You yeah. know what I mean? And I yeah. feel like when it, when it all boils down to, and I think with me reading off of Reddit and me reading off of different comments and different views oh he's arrogant he's cocky he's this he's that first of all you don't know me that's one yeah two people get misconstrued of passion with aggression aggression with a, with passion yeah so i agree so. yeah and it's not aggression it's the passion you know i love what i do yeah. i want to win yeah. And also at the same time, when we was in the back and we were never in the kitchen, or we wasn't in the kitchen or we was at the hotel, I was personal with people, laughing, joking with people. I always motivated different cooks, different chefs, like, yo, just cook. Yeah. That's all we got to do It's just cook. But to me, off of me reading just off of the edits and, you know, Reddit mm -hmm. and just different things, it made it seems like. I was just an asshole, and that's not who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but you're love... you're you're looking at the internet, right? Internet. There's and I I was actually on uh, a podcast yesterday with somebody, um, and uh, we were talking about that. I mean, you're talking about trolls, right? These are people that just want that's people's true. reaction. They right. just want people's reaction. So but, I would but, say ninety nine percent of those are just. I understand their trolls. I truly, truly understand their trolls. And I understand that TV has to do what TV has to do to stay on TV. Yeah. I understand that. But at the end of the day, you know, we're real people. Oh, 100 percent We are real people to the point where we have we see this every day. I'm sitting on the phone with my mom telling her about the show. I get a Reddit message, a message out the blue on 20. Christian's a fucking asshole. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, and the thing about it is like. You don't know who are, you don't know me, you yeah, know. I'm yeah. just on the show. Like I came there for a reason, and cool. the reason why I came because I love what I do, and it's a competition show. You want to win? You're you're you're, 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 you're the win. win. Yeah, hundred percent. I told the contestants. I told them I was like, look, I don't mean it's in no harm. I don't mean it's in no disrespect. But when we get in that kitchen, it's showtime. Yeah, it's on and popping. When we leave the kitchen, how you doing? You good? <laughs> I'm good. You good? I'm good. <laughs> You know what I mean? It was never nothing personal. Never nothing personal. But the fact of the matter is, in regards to, 
you know, other contestants, they may have not liked me or they wanted me out, whatever it may be. I understand it's a show, yeah. but like I always show love to damn near everybody on the show. Yeah. Because I always come like, yo, I remember Derek Fox pulled me to the side. Derek Fox, he pulled yeah. me to the side. He was like, you know, we're the best chefs throughout this whole competition, right? And I ain't never told nobody this. Never yeah. told nobody. Didn't even tell the past, the other contestants. And I was like, bro, why would you even say something like that? At the end of the day, I already know because that's your personality. Yeah. You know? I was like, why would you even say anything? Like I said, to be honest with you, everybody's in this room. They're good chefs. They're good cooks. Yeah. Everybody has their own way of cooking. Everybody have their own style of cooking. What makes me and you better? I don't consider myself better. You know, I feel like through the competition of what they threw at us as judges and producers, yeah. I was the most consistent cook. You know, that doesn't make me better than everybody else. I was just consistent. Yeah. You know, I wasn't fragile. I didn't get worried. Because that was one of my biggest things that I said to myself when I came back to season 12. Stay out your head. Just yeah. cook. Yeah. And I show and I show that throughout the whole competition. Stay out your head and just cook. And just keep it, you know, keep it spicy. <laughs> the three judges. Gordon yeah. Ramsay. Do you have a good story of Gordon? Man, Gordon is the man. I love Gordon Ramsay. You know, not like love Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> You know, honestly, like, hands down, like, out of all the judges from season five and all the way to season 12, like, I can tell that Gordon Ramsay had a light for me. Yeah. I can tell that Gordon Ramsay really showed, like, this young man can really fucking burn. This yeah. is what he does, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and then, too, like, at the end of the day, he's Gordon. Like, if you really think about it, like, he's really the last say-so. Yeah. In regards to whoever he wants to come back to the show or whatever it may be. So, you know, when I got my apron season 12 and he walked back up to me, he walked to me and he said, you know, you came a long way. You award winning chef, best chef Louisiana in 2020. You got your own season in line. You're doing a lot of great things. Why come back? And I told him I was like, chef, because I love what I do. You know, I'm doing this for my grandma, my grandmother. My grandmother passed away two years ago. And that was one of the lowest point of my life is losing her because a lot of things that was taught to me as a young individual was really through her and my mom you know i never had really had opportunities to meet my biological father he passed away during covid but they were my teachers you know so when i lost her it was tough so he was like man so you back why give up everything and come back and i told him i said i did it for my grandmother you know what I mean? Like, I work with professional athletes. Zion Williamson, Alvin Kamari, you know what I mean? Uh, Chris Ivory. I can go on and on. The list can go on, Private Shepherd. But I told, I always told myself, if I ever have an opportunity, if I ever have a chance to come back, I'm going to get my ass to that finale. Now, I'm not in control of the results, but I'm going to get my ass to that finale. And when I left for season 12 and my mom and my siblings couldn't come to L.A., and see me get my apron, that bothered me. But yeah. I, I understood why they could not come. Yeah. You know? And when I saw their, fa you know, all the other contestants' family getting their aprons, like I felt happy for them, but it was like, damn, you know, I wish my, you know? But I knew I was on a mission. Yeah. Because I know when I left, I told my mom, I said, I understand y'all can't come, but I'm gonna see you in the finale. I promise you, I'm gonna see you in the finale. And that was my goal. Yeah. That was my vision. That was my, that's what I wanted to do. That was your mission. You know? That was my mission. My mission was it. get to the finale and win. You yeah. know, I'm not in control of what the, you know, who wins, but at the end of the day, just get there. You know, from top five to second, I, I call it, I'm second place. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm second I, place. I love it. I love it. But, yeah. um, but I tell people all the time, because, you know, people ask me when I'm on tour. You know, uh, and, it, and, it and, it, and it doesn't take away from the contestants. And I don't want it to shy away from the winner or yeah. shy away from Michael. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're badass chefs. And at the end of the day, like, it was an honor to cook with them in the finale. And 
regardless of what was edited, regardless of how everything played out, I'll never be bitter or disappointed in how things turned out because oh, I cooked my ass off. And it doesn't take away from them because they're great chefs they self, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Are you a mad man? You know, I first when I did my last interview, no lie, bro. Yeah, I went to the back my last interview, and as I was coming coming out, and I tell this story all the time. As, as I was coming out, one of the audience guys, he was a producer. He said, "Bro, you did your thing." He said, "Go get that trophy." I love it. Yeah. He said, "Go get that." Ask it like even people in the audience. It was like, bro, either first or second, you did your thing. Yeah, you know, I love you it. did your thing, right? So as I put my left foot onto the stage before they called the winner, my grandmother whispered in my ear, and she said, "Son, you have completed what you have came to do. You should not be worried. You should not be ashamed. You it. damn, you should not be upset." You did everything you needed to do, regardless of what the turnout is. You did. You showed the world who you are, what you can do. You forced to be reckoned with, you know, and it's not about the win. So I knew before Gordon Ramsay even said Dara is the winner, I knew it wasn't going to be me, regardless of what it was. I knew. Now, if it was me, I just would have been shocked, <laughs> but <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be me, yeah. especially with the message that I read in my daily Bible that day before I went to the show. What and, was it? And it basically said, you have came this far, you've completed. I'm gonna leave it at that. So when they said her name, I wasn't mad. I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't hurt. I stepped to the side and let this young lady get her shine. Let her get a shine. You know, let her get a shine. Because at the end of the day, you know, they know what Christian did. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go to the other two judges. Joe, do you have a, still a relationship with Joe? Oh, uh, Joe's cool. I mean, Joe... One thing I like about he seems him very he, he seems very pushed away from everything. He's very pushed away. I, he like very very pushed away. When Joe came to me in season twelve, he walked up he walked up to me. He was like, "Christian, I don't think we ever met." I said, "What you just say, Joe?" <laughs> so Joe had to step back and come right back and say, "Oh, I remember you." I'm like, "Listen, Joe, I know I got facial hair now, but come on now, man. You the one told me." Am I moist? You asked me, was I moist? Because you ate my chick, my macadamia crusted chicken, season five. That got me my apron. You said, damn, it was good. And you don't remember me, Joe? Like, you serious? You don't remember me, Joe? But nah, Joe's cool. Joe, Joe's cool. Um, Chef Aron, he's cool, too. You know? I don't have, like, when people ask me, who's your best judge? It's not really on best. It's just, like, everybody got their own personality. Got their yeah, own of course, personality. yeah. You know what I mean? So I can't really say much. Of course, I'll say Gordon Ramsay because he's the head honcho. But it's not really based off the because he's a head honcho. It's really based off his history, his background, what he came from, yeah. what he had to endure to get to where he's at. That's why I pay attention to when yeah. I look up to people and I pay attention to they what you know to the 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 the, the, the history of who they are and what they've been through. That's what I pay attention to. Yeah, you know, is what they went through to get there. Yeah. You know, people ask me all the time, who's your favorite quarterback? Tom Brady. Come on, now. Come on. Tom Brady. If you if you pay attention to his story from coming from Michigan to where yeah. he's at now, come on, now. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay broke his leg. He could have been a professional soccer player. Messed up his leg. He yeah. decided to dab into cooking. And look what he, he built. He built the whole empire. Massive empire. Massive empire. Massive empire, Massive empire man. Massive yeah, empire. Yeah. And those are the type of people I like to learn from. You know, yeah, Bill Gates, Gordon Ramsay, like yeah. people that are actually businessmen. And, you know, I'm, and I'm going to just say it since, I'm, since we're interviewing right now. Cooking, I love cooking. I'm passionate about it. It's easy to me. Yeah. 
But what I love most, I love being a businessman. Yeah. That's what I love most. Yeah. I love my success, how yeah. far that I've came to where I was, when I was homeless to where I'm at now. You know? Those are the type of stories that I enjoy. You know? I love that. I love that. Like I said, I've been an entrepreneur for 27 years. I mean, I've been on my own since 19. I started first company at 17. I've been on my own since 19 and 45. How old are you right now? I'm, I'm 37. Oh, I'm about to say 37. I just turned 38. When, when did you turn 38? Last Monday, October Happy, 17. happy belated birthday, brother. Thank you. Thank you. What, is, what does fatherhood mean to you? Fatherhood is important, man. You know, and I ain't trying to get all sentimental, but it's, it's, it's a good thing that you touched on that. And you, you asked that question because, you know, I, you know I, grew up, I grew up in a household with a single parent, just my mom, you know, taking care of five kids, making sure, you know, all five kids get to school on time, making sure all five kids is fed. So, you know, just seeing her hustle and seeing her grind, you know, she's my, you know, my Maya Angelou because she showed me the way of how to do things. Yeah. And I wasn't fortunate enough to you know, have a relationship with my biological dad, you know, for some odd reason. I guess he didn't want a relationship more so say. But um, even at a young age, even at a young teenager, even at a young man, I always told myself, if I ever have a child, you know, whatever I went through, I'm not going to let them go through. And I, I stand on that. And I still stand on that to this day. So fatherhood is important, man. Being in your kids' life, having those constant conversations with them, even sometimes uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. You know, I tell my son all the time, "Dad, that I'm not gonna always be here, and I gotta keep it real." You know, yeah. and I feel like that 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 is what helps kids create that relationship and be so close to their family because you're not sugarcoating it. You're being real. You're being honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, me and my son, we have those conversations. We have those type of conversations. We have great conversations. You know, I try to push him through different conversation just to expand his mindset yeah how how old is your son my son's 14 same as mine he'd be 14 in november november 5th yeah my son my son just turned 14 so he was born in uh, 2008 yeah he was born in 2008 and and my daughter and my daughter my daughter is 16 born in 2006 and it's crazy as i mean fatherhood's pretty much everything to me if you see my stuff like my kids are both in high school i still drive them to school every morning and then that's because I could, I still, they're my workout partners after, after, after work, after I'm done in the office, I pick them up and we go to the gym together. So we have a very close bond, right? You just froze again. Do you hear me? Christian? Yeah, oh, there, there, you're back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was saying, so we, we have this incredible bond and it's, and it's living and I said, and I've done public speaking stuff like that. And I always talk about living with no regrets. You gotta live with no regrets, right? I lost my dad. Uh, I lost my dad, which I I had an incredible relationship. I was a forty five year old Christian that would talk to my dad two three times a day. I would call him every night to say goodnight and have a conversation with him. And I lost him. Uh, it's coming up to eighteen months, so it was it was roughly when you when you lost your grandmother, right? And it's and it and it's something where I live with no regrets. I saw him all the time. I talked to him all the time. He spent so much time with his grandkids, but you still have regrets. So you have to yeah, live with no regrets. You have to try to live. Totally agree. I mean, that's how I felt, you know. I, I remember when my grandmother used to, when I came off of Masters of the Season 5, and she was like, why are you always on the go? Why are you always grinding? Why are you always working? And I'm like, Grandma, like, you know, I just want to provide a better life, of course, for myself, but, you know, for my family. And I, and that's the type of heart that I have. Like, I want to see everybody win. Yeah, you know, where, where, where does it say in the Bible that we're supposed to be poor and we, we're supposed to struggle, you know? Yeah. And... She always used to tell me, like, you know, you, you got to slow down. I remember missing Christmas and Thanksgivings and stuff like that. And that's, like, really one of the things that, like, I do regret a little is, like, catching those conversations where I did come home, you know. But I even remember leaving, you know, the day before, she, the day, the day, the day I left, she died the day after. And she was on her way home from the store. And I was, you know, I had to get back to New Orleans because I had a client and this and that, that and this. And, um. Yeah, that was, you know, time is everything, you know, and that's one thing that I had to really learn with is, you know, time. it's not about the dollar, you know, but I've gotten to the point in my life where I don't have to hustle as hard. My talent speaks more for me than anything, you yeah. know, yeah. but I try to u- utilize that time now with my son. I try to u- utilize that time with my mom, my siblings, 
and even try to instill in them, you know, great ideas or, you know, yeah. push them in that they want to do. Yeah. But um, time, yeah, time, 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 time is the only currency we can't get time back. Right. Yes. Yeah, time is everything. Time, time is everything, everything, man. Time is everything, yeah. man. It's in, in every, every second. And I always tell the people this too, Christian is, is, I mean, you got to look down at your feet on a regular basis and know where you are because the past you have zero control over, the future you have zero control over, just live in the moment, right? And I think a lot of people, yeah. especially when you're a busy entrepreneur and you got that hustle and the drive, you're always looking forward, forward, forward. And and sometimes you got to really sit back and look at your feet and, and appreciate what you have, appreciate what you have around you. And in and, and your past too, I mean, a lot of people struggle and they, and they focus so much attention and energy towards their past when there's nothing to change on it. Yeah. You'll I'm learn from it. You'll learn from it and you move on. I'm not a past person, bro. Yeah, good. I'm not a past good. person at all. Like, like, even in relationships or people that I've speaking with in the past where it's just friends or somebody that I was dating, like, they're like, do you think, I don't think about my past. Yeah, it's I like that too. for a reason. Yeah, me too. It's a past for a reason. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. Yeah, I It's love past that. for a reason. Like, I'm moving ahead. Like, yeah. I learned my lesson, got what I need from it. I'm ready to move ahead. And yeah. I think that's like one of the, that's one of the attributes that I have as a human. And I feel like that I, I get that from my mom is yeah. that whatever shakes the table, I'm going to readjust. I, love I can that. adjust. Yeah. I can, I can, I can, I can adjust with anything. And even with the show, yeah. even with the show, going in that kitchen and when it was like, okay, you got to do this today. My mind is already going. Yeah. I'm adjusting, you know. Yeah. So, you know, just understanding my purpose and one thing that I, I had I had I had a conversation with a friend the other day. I was like, man, people ask me, why are you not in a relationship? Why are you in a relationship? What's important is me first. Yeah. My health. Yeah. Then you. Yes. Then you. Yes. Because if I can't instill it to me, yeah. right? Yeah. And if I can't make sure that I'm healthy, yeah. then how would I be a hundred percent good person to you? Exactly. That I'm able to give the job that I'm supposed to give, if it's me cooking or if it's me being a husband or father or whatever it may be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, Oprah so says it. Oprah. I have Oprah yeah. up there. She says it. Always yeah. fill your cup up first. You got to fill your cup up first, man. Yeah. 100%. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm, Jay, I'm starting to realize that more and more now because I'm a giver. Yeah. I want to see everybody win. Those, that's like one of the traits of leaders. Like, we want to see everybody win. Yeah. We want to save everybody. Yeah. But you can't save everybody. No, no, you know? no, no. You got to fill your cup up first and, and, and there's always overflow. There's always enough for everybody else, right? You have to worry about your family, yeah. worry about your yeah. loved ones, worry about your friends. And yeah, yeah, there always is. You, you mentioned it in, in a couple, couple moments uh, of our conversation about your mom. Just get in more detail, like everything about your mom. Like, what does she mean to you? And, 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 and my and- Maya Angelo, she's my Maya Angelo. Yeah. That's my Maya Angelo. But a lot of people say, what is one word for you? Maya Angelo? Because, you know, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You froze up a little bit. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you know, my mom is, she honestly, hands down, my mom is a true trailblazer, man. I mean, how people portray her on TV, like, your mom is just so sweet. She really is, man. Like, my mom is amazing. And I feel like that's that's where I found a little bit of my 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 healing when i lost my grandma was really through my mom because yeah. my like my mom and my grandmother was like this yeah you know what i'm saying and to me i had both of the pot cream of the pot if she don't want to make a sweet potato pie my grandmother gonna make a sweet potato <laughs> pie and if she don't want to make a sweet potato pie my mom's gonna make a sweet potato <laughs> pie but you know really hands down like what's most important is her wisdom yeah. Because when I left the show, you know, I was a little bit down because of the results, but like her wisdom is what really like kept me going and kept me motivated and kept me like, you got a bigger purpose than this, yeah. you know, like this is what you need to do. Attack the purpose, you know, um, you know, uh, get something out of this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and then at the end of the day, she said, represent, this is what you do. You are green, represent, you know, so just for me to be on TV and, you know, I had opportunity for my, for the world. My mom is my everything. That's my Maya Angelou. Um, she really like taught me how to be a good man, of course, but also at the same time, um, how to love because, you know, that's one of, that's like one of the first thing a mom will teach you is how to love, like, you know, conditional good love, you know, that's what they show. 
Um, but, you know, I've seen my mom go through so much and for her to, you know, trailblaze herself through the top, you know, through situations and all the way to the top is just, it's a good thing, you know, because she's, a, she's an individual that's been through a lot like myself, but she always found the way, you know, she always found the way and she always keeps smiling. You know, she smiled through every, you know, every scratch or every broken bone. She, she, she's the type of woman to keep smiling because at the end of the day, she know there's going to be a way. And even with like, you know, me being on the show, like even with the situation of, you know, the results of the show, she, she just said, hey, man, you did. You came in, you did everything you needed to do. There's no way. There's no way in hell you need to be ashamed of what you've done. No way. You know, so just for me to have my mom on the show and for her to um, be there and to support me with my family, it was just a great thing. You know, no, none of, no, no family member would have been on TV. So just for that to happen, I mean, you know, it's a great thing. And just for me to have people, just for me to tell my story and invite people into my life to really know who I am and where I come from and the people that has influenced me to be the best chef that I can possibly be, you know? Um, and of course my mom can cook. Yeah. She can cook a butt up. So I don't know, man. My mom's amazing. I love I, it. I, I love, I, it. I, love I, it. I would never give up this lady, you know? I love it. Her I love my it. I, I love I would, it. And people ask me, and honestly, when people meet my mom, they'd be like, yo, can I have your mom? Like, no. <laughs> no. You know, my mom's is, she's wholesome. Like she's warming. She's welcoming. She's loving. Like, even when she was at my tour dates in Dallas and Houston, like, she was like, I'll be there to help you. I'm like, yo, you don't need to help. You just chill, you know? Yeah. And, like, the way how her vibration that she gives off invites people in. Where can our audience get a hold of you? Where can they find you? Where, they, where can they pre-purchase your book and, 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 and your recipes and all that stuff like that? Where, where can they get a hold of you? I appreciate that, Jay, man. Listen, you guys can go to www.foodfashiontaste.com and purchase my book. You'll be able to purchase my gumbo. You'll be able to purchase my cookbook and whatnot. Everything is on my website. Everything. Matter of fact, stay right there. You might got to edit this too, Jay. We not playing, bro. This is my gumbo base. I love it. I got to see love. some of this. You know what I mean? So I got the instructions on the back. Yeah, this is this is uh, Chef Christian's gumbo. Now, listen, you do not have to make a roux, and I know that's one of the things that a lot of people have issues with is making the roux for the gumbo. So I have it all here for you. So you have all the herbs, all my additional uh, seasonings that it, that are in here, and then guess what? All you have to do is add six cups of chicken stock. That's it, or seafood stock if you decide to do a chicken gumbo, chicken and sausage gumbo, or if you're look, looking to do a seafood gumbo. And it's going to, you bring it to a high boil, you put your crab meat in there, your shrimp, your chicken, your sausage, and you got a New Orleans Creole gumbo. I love yeah. it. So I love it. I love you'll it. You'll be able to purchase this online. I will be doing cooking tutorials on my on my IG, showing you guys how to make it. Also, what is available, my um, lavender garlic herb seasoning, my zesty lemon pill seasoning, and then also my Cajun all-purpose seasoning. And my cookbook will be out in a few months. I'm not giving a day. I'm like, everybody's waiting. Like, everybody's like, when that book will drop, it's coming. And I will be doing signed copies. I will be signing copies. So if you do purchase the book, I will be signing. You know, if you want to put in there, Chef Christian, can you sign my book? I will be doing a signing. So, yeah. So, Love yes, it. go to www.foodfashiontaste.com and purchase. You will not be disappointed. I'm going to ask you. I got you on good now. So I'm going to ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. If something were to happen to you today, in a few words, how would you want to be remembered, described by your loved ones? End it off. It has to be one word. Or it's one no, word. In, in a few words. In a few words. Oh, okay. Okay. Passionate, ambitious, loving, and supportive. Because I'm always supporting. I'm always loving. Like I want to see people smile, man. Like yeah. I'm just big on like, you know, seeing people be happy. Yeah, me too. And, and honestly, that was like really one of the reasons why I did dining with Christian. Like I enjoy bringing people together over food. Yeah, you know, I had an opportunity working with uh, side by side with Chef Leah Chase, and one of the things that I remember that she said to me, "Son, if your food is what it is and as good as it is, regardless of where you at, people go, they're gonna come." 
So for me to go to Atlanta and go to Boston, you know, go to all these other cities that I'm going to, and even for the people to support me as much as they did, I sold over 200 something tickets for my tour. So yeah. I was just so surprised. So just to bring people together and just to see the 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 facial expressions when they're eating my food or when they're you know amongst one another and they're strangers. Yeah. They come in as strangers, but they leave that they leave as friends. Yeah. And you know, and I, I feel like that that means so much more than anything. Like when I can just bring good people together, yeah. do one thing. And that's the reason why I say my 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 mission statement is. You know, changing lives one plate at a time. I love it. I love it. If I'm if I'm changing your mindset through something that you don't eat, but or maybe even just changing your mindset in regards to meeting new people. Yeah. You know, it's, to me, I call it. I guess it's breaking barriers. 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 Yeah. People don't like to. People don't like to be amongst other people. Yeah. So if I can bring them together over one thing, I mean, that's a great thing. So that's why I want people to remember me as a person that's loving, ambitious passionate supportive and a person with a big heart because i just want to see everybody win even you jay i love it i love it i love it brother this has been awesome man i appreciate you i appreciate you taking your time i'm sure gonna have you back on when your book comes out maybe we can have you back on again yeah man where are you located toronto canada toronto what you know man with drake okay (laughs) <laughs> that's what's up and you know what a lot of people have been hitting me up why don't you come to canada with that good looking food come to canada come to canada come we to have canada. a toronto yeah have you ever been to toronto canada never been to toronto toronto's canada, got a great great restaurant scene here man very multicultural great scenery great restaurants it's, it's, it's very for food it's it's an amazing amazing place for food yeah I need yeah. to come there. I definitely yeah. come there, man. So listen, you're inviting me. So when I come, bro, and I hit you up, I, I, buddy, I got, I got, there. I got lots of space here for you, buddy. I got a lot, hundred percent, hundred percent. The door is open. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it so much. And, I, and most important, man, thank you for allowing me to come up on here and you know rap with you. And um, this has been yeah. fun, man. This but yeah, has been that was fun. On the show, man. I really, I, I really felt like Master Chef. Like great opportunity. I just didn't like the editing, man. Yeah, hated yeah. the editing. This will be raw. Editing, there's right? no, there's no editing here. This is, this is raw. This is all Christian. Oh yeah, that's raw. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I totally agree. I, I totally agree. I, I know that, but like, just to piggyback off of that, I really don't like the editing. But yeah, I'm okay with coming in second. I love. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's. You know what? It's just, it's just. You have to look at it. Is it was just a moment, and that moment we're gonna take and just continue the path. It's just, it's just a moment in your path, right? It's life is a path. Sure. It's, a, it's, a, it's a. It's a what you talk about is the medals, right? You're going up and down the medals, and yeah. just, a, just, a, just, a, just a moment, right? That's all it was, right? right. Just right. a moment, and, yeah, a moment to you know to propel your career, or whatever, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and big shout out to all the other contestants that was on the show, and and rally and we rally what you said too, Chef Christian is is that moment means absolutely nothing if you don't hustle and put the work in after and do the work and do your recipes and do your book and continue to do your tours. And none of that matters. Cause if you just did that moment on TV and just hit away in months, there's an, there's a million other reality TV shows. You'll be totally forgotten about. Exactly. So it's just with the work and the effort and everything you're doing now. And, yeah, and just look at it as, as, as almost advertising. You just got some free advertising to continue what you're doing. Really your real mission is that's all it was. So- so yeah. great. I'm in a process. I, I didn't tell you this, but I'm actually in a, pre, in a process of relocating to Texas where my mom is. Oh, interesting. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking to do that next year and I'm looking to open up a location. So be on the lookout. Okay. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that. Is restaurant in the, in this near future? Of course. I love it. Of course. I love it. I love it in Texas. Like, man. Everybody feels like, it feels like everybody's moving to Texas. Low taxes, beautiful, beautiful greenery. Bruh. Bro, well, listen, when I tell you it's beautiful out there, like my mom, she, I've been out, I left her home at 17. And every time I go out there and I, I see the fan base, the people that support me out there, I just say to myself, like, damn, I really need to get back. Like, I need, I need to come home and be closer to the family, help the family in whatever way that's needed to be. I mean, we had, we own about five acres of land. So, oh, you know, beautiful. Get so, you, in, could, get you, could, you could plan a lot of your things for your restaurant. You're, there you go. That's the vision. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's I love it. Vision, I got man. I got some I got some Our friends family. in I got some good friends in Texas too. And and there's yeah. a guy, Steve Harris. Uh, he was originally from Nigeria, a businessman, incredible, incredible yeah. entrepreneur. He just moved with yeah. his family to uh Texas. He's been there now for about six months. Man, yeah, incredible, incredible entrepreneur. So when you do move there, I'll I'll do the intro. 
Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been awesome, brother. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me. And, you know, definitely, I would definitely stay in touch. You, you know, we have an interview not saying, but I'm definitely going to stay in touch and keep you on, keep you up to date in regards to what I'm doing. And I'll definitely let you know what I'm in. And I love sure. when you're in, when you're, in, when you're ready to come to Toronto, the door is open, man. I got, I got a, a whole bunch of little uh, vacation properties you can stay at and we can hang out and stuff. Come on, man. We can do a couple of dinners, man. A couple of jacuzzi <laughs> boys, a couple of wine bottles. <laughs> love it. We'll go to a Rafter game. Let me see if we'll bump into Drake there. <laughs> Hey, 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 if Drake need a chef, hey, we can make that. <laughs> Drake need a chef? I love it, I love it. I know it. you got pulled like that, man. You probably got, you know, I know you got pulled like that. I know Drake need a chef, man. I saw the house. I got like five houses, five houses in one. Yeah, crazy. yeah, it's crazy, crazy. Appreciate it, buddy. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, man. God bless you, and uh, happy to tell you something I say hi.